Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with a new video. This time I got a little goodie from Seed Studio. They were kind enough to send this guy in. And I'm really big on Arduino projects. and Not specifically Arduino, but microprocessor projects. And when they asked if I was interested in um, checking out their new kit, which is the Grove Beginner Kit, I said sure. And I have a couple other Arduino kits, but this one's actually pretty unique, I would say. A lot of the other kits come in a box with a bunch of wires and a breadboard, and you wire everything yourself. And that's great and all. This actually takes a different approach. This, you can already see it from the picture, but let's just pop this open, and it'll immediately be obvious uh, what exactly is going on here. Here, this is actually pretty interesting. You're supposed to kind of leave this in the box. You can remove it, of course. They're just held in by like little cardboard flaps on the sides. It does come with a micro USB cable, which is pretty short. It's one of these flat cables, but it is pretty good, nice quality. I mean, it's silicone-y, uh, but it's only about six, well, probably about eight inches, something like that. It'll it'll get you get the job done. They actually did think about this. If you're going to leave it in the case, you need a way of accessing the USB port. So there's actually a cutout in the, the shell there so that you can plug in a cord. That's interesting. On the other side here, uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. On the other side, we have all these spare cables that were mentioned. And these are just uh, like Molex to Molex, uh, four pin uh, cables and they all have a little rubber band on them nicely packed in uh, that's if you want to wire something externally to all these headers or if you want to break uh, break out using like flush cutters or whatever uh, break out each of the modules and wire them manually I'm just gonna keep them there for for now anyway you can see here it actually has a pretty interesting design there's like a Everything is kind of routed out, but there are metallic interconnects using like vias for the uh, brake slots. And all the signals are routed through this PCB to the main controller. So for instance here, you'll see it says D6 button. All that means is uh, if you don't break this module off, it is permanently wired to uh, digital pin 6 basically. So it goes to this header right here as well as it, they label all, this is an Arduino Uno compatible uh, board, so it'll go to D6, which is uh, right here, the pin before the last one on this first, first set of headers. Anyway, uh, yeah, so in terms of not needing to wire anything, yeah, it's, it's well labeled. It says what every single uh, peripheral is wired to, so all you have to do is define it correctly in software, and you actually conceivably don't need to change anything. So it's sort of a breadboard, but already pre-wired uh, permanently, but you can break apart each of the modules, snap them out or cut them out and wire them however you'd like. But yeah, that's a really nice idea. And they randomly have a, uh, a ruler on the side there. I guess if you wanted to take this out, you could use it to measure something for some odd reason, but whatever. The silk screen is really nice and clear. They put a lot of thought into um, the design of this, so I actually really like this. And I can't have imagined that making a board this large would have been like super cheap. So yeah, but a lot of thought's gone into this. And this, as I said, is just a standard Arduino Uno, even though it looks a little different. Um, they're just using smaller packages for the um, AT Mega, and then there's the. Uh, the what is it 32u2 uh, which contains the uh, usb serial bootloader so basically when you go to program the main at mega chip this acts as like a usb uh, serial bridge and so this is 100 percent as far as i can tell uh arduino uno compatible which is really nice and it breaks everything out so if you wanted to use um the modules however you like you got all that Let's actually fire it up. It does come with, and I like this a lot, it comes with a demo program that, that pretty much shows off everything on the board, which is really cool. This is a way these kind of um, introductory kits should be designed, in my opinion. So we have here, um, it starts up in light mode, and there's actually a light sensor here. Uh, it's connected to A6, and when you cover it, you can notice... 
the value drops. And there's also a little circle that uh, fills in and empties out depending on the brightness. So anyway, to access uh, the other features, you basically press and hold the button and it'll show you a little picture. And if you click the button again, uh, now we have the accelerometer, which I believe is in this corner right here. And it actually gives you the raw values. I, I guess they're scaled because they're fractional values and they can go plus or minus. And you can actually tilt this and there's a little ball there. You can see just sort of I'm able to move it by moving the accelerometer. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, if we press and hold this, obviously the LED blinks during. Now we can move the potentiometer over and go to air pressure. pressure. And now the air pressure module is right here. It's, it's an absolute tiny thing here. And the ones that aren't connected to digital I.O. per se uh, will be marked with like I2C, which means you have to access it via I squared C. And I don't think it would have been really nice, I think, to mark somewhere like underneath or next to the symbol, if it's on an I2C bus, what uh, address you actually need to, to send to access it. They don't have that information. You could always look up the data sheet for the parts. Uh, and there possibly is that information maybe up here. There's basically like very simple explanations for basic functions up here. I don't see any for like I2C addresses, unfortunately. So maybe that's something that they can improve on uh, because without pulling up the data sheet for all these different parts, I don't know off the top of my head what the addresses are. Now they do have a library that you can use, uh, but you're always free to program everything without any libraries, just using your own software. So it's not absolutely necessary, but it just would have been kind to, to do that, to have the, the, um, the address for each I2C device. Anyway, uh, pressure, it's reading it. <laughs> We're just going to go back to the main menu. And temperature humidity. It is 27 degrees Celsius and 50% humidity. And let's go to sound. Sound is the microphone up here. So when I talk really loud, it goes louder. And then when I'm really quiet, it goes quiet. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the menu. Light, we were already, that's the one that it boots up in. Let's exit out of that. And that appears actually to be the last one. We're already at the end of the rotation. So I took a look at the website, I downloaded, there's a zip folder with, um, well, two zip folders, one with the documentation for all this and the other one with the actual example programs as well as the like libraries. And you can just install that through the Arduino IDE, uh, no biggie there. It seems reasonable, but I like coding bare metal. So for uh, playing around with this, I specifically just coded bare metal. So I actually ported a program that I wrote before. You might have seen my uh, analog VU meter with physics uh, demo. And I changed it a little bit. So there's a couple of things. This screen is close to an SSD 1306, but it's like an SSD 15 something or other. And it's slightly different. And when I ported it, when I first uh, tried using the driver that I wrote for the 1306, it works, but it didn't display correctly. And so I actually had to modify it. Basically what happened was it only showed the first four lines instead of the full eight lines. And the lines were odd. It was basically like every other row of pixels was displayed. It was weird. It was still visible, but you basically couldn't fit as much information. So I found out that um, I need to tweak the initialization on my uh, OLED driver function. And then it worked. So you can see here, hello world. And basically, I just um, rewrote that uh, 
kind of VU meter with a uh, balancing analog physics uh, demo. And here you can see uh, it's basically now it's a PID compensator. So I added the differential term uh, for this demo. And the top uh, number you can see as I tweak, the top bar will move according to the position of this potentiometer. And the there we go. And the position is the actual raw value of this potentiometer from zero all the way up to 127. The reference, uh, I just call it reference, but that's basically the bottom bar, which is uh, following the top one, but um, basically processed through the PID filter. And you can see it doesn't follow exactly. It kind of lags behind and it oscillates a little bit because it's underdamped. And you can see the error is calculated by subtracting the uh, position and the reference, well, the reference from the position. And so you can see if it overshoots or undershoots, it'll go kind of large, positive, and negative, and eventually it'll settle towards around zero. It kind of oscillates a little bit, and I think that's there's a little bit of steady state error with the tuning of the, the uh, PID values that I selected to give it this response. So it never exactly stays at zero. It kind of changes just a tiny bit every once in a while. But anyway, good enough for the uh, demonstration of this. So yeah, this was actually pretty easy to get working uh, once I figured out the quirk with the uh, OLED driver, uh, basically the way that I'd, I'd written it for a different uh, controller chip. Now, if you use their, their library, I saw they're using... Uh, UG8 lib or something like that. And I've used that in the past. And it's actually a really easy uh, OLED driver to get up and running. All the functions are uh, already pre-coded for you. So if you wanted to use that, it would be a lot easier to write to this display. I just wanted to use my uh, software. So anyway, uh, another feature that I added was reading the button to actually halt the value. So it'll pause the calculation. And then when you let go, it continues. So yeah, that, that was just a really quick demo. So I, I think this type of product targets uh, people who are kind of uh, not necessarily beginners, but uh, who don't want to mess with wiring. So I guess if you're more into the software side and you don't want to fuss with the hardware, you just want something that is pre-wired and will work. So you don't have to mess with like annoying analog problems or noise or anything like that. It's all pre-wired for you. Everything is marked very clearly what goes where. So all you have to do is worry about the software. And they do provide um, libraries to get you started on everything. I took a quick look through some of the code for like the um, I squared C devices. And it seems pretty easy to use well documented in the uh, header files you'll find the uh, function declarations, and they give some really straightforward examples that you could actually modify. I, I would suggest if you are really a beginner, that's where you should be going. Look at the examples, program the board with the examples, test it out, and then modify the examples to do what you want it to do. I think that's a great place to start out. And they do provide some examples here on the, the lid, just a very basic Arduino concepts like what a loop is, what the setup is, how to set pin mode, uh, digital write, serial print, et cetera, et cetera. But um, this is something that I think is would be it would have been great when I was uh, a lab proctor for digital electronics and like programming uh, embedded microprocessors. This would have been amazing. I can't tell you how much time we wasted in the labs and the early labs, like the first few weeks of class. Uh, just getting the the Arduino Unos wired to a breadboard. And a lot of people didn't quite grasp the concept of how a breadboard works. So there's a lot of like really simple, silly wiring mistakes at the beginning. And I think we could have just completely avoided all that if we had gone with a board like this. So then we could have uh, concentrated more on the software instead of debugging silly mistakes on a breadboard. But anyway, yeah, um, this is actually a really interesting product. Uh, last I checked, it was about 25 bucks. So this actually isn't all too expensive it, compared to like buying an official Arduino Uno, which I think is around that price point anyway. But this way you get actually a whole host of sensors and an OLED screen, everything all ready to go. And if you 
so desire, you can use their libraries. Or like me, if you like programming bare metal, then you're free to do that as well. But I don't have to worry about wiring anything. Everything's already pre-wired. So yeah, this is actually a really good deal, I think. Uh, something that is really convenient. I can just close this box up. The box is its carrying case. I really like that. And just throw this in my backpack. And I'm ready to go uh, for developing and uh, testing different prototypes and whatnot. So yeah, anyway, uh, that was just a really quick look. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, if you are interested, I will have a link down below to the sales page for this if you want some more uh, technical information as well. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.